Beverly's done this before. I know. Remember, he used to just take off. No call, nothing. Remember, Charlie? We have always had trouble. I remember this time, this one time when he just took off without saying anything, and I said to Vi, I said, you pack that son of a bitch's bag, you put him out on the front porch. And you know, I always liked your father. I know. I always liked your father. As a matter of fact, for God's sakes, I introduced Vi. You did him. not introduce him. Why can't I didn't? You did not. You had a date with him and stood him up and sent your sister instead. Well, that's an introduction. That's what an introduction is. I just don't think it's accurate. He was too old for me. Besides, Violet, shrinking Violet. She could never meet a man on her own. Nobody ever called her shrinking Violet. Charlie and your father always got along real well. They used to go on fishing trips together. But when Beverly just took off like that, without saying anything, without a call even, well, it was my obligation, my obligation to look after my sister. You don't have an obligation to do I have an things. obligation to look after my sister. You are not obliged to get involved in somebody else's marriage. Not anybody's marriage. But if they're married to your big sister, I sure as hell do. He has sisters. She knows what I mean. I said to Violet, I said, you pack up that son of a bitch's bags and you leave them waiting on the front porch. And then you take those goddamn books he's so fond of and make yourself a big pile in the front yard. And then you build yourself a big bonfire. And then just all those stupid papers of his throw them all in too. You don't burn a man's books. I think you're contradicting me. The man's books didn't do anything. His possessions aren't responsible. Well, she didn't do it. So, of course she didn't do it. Let me tell you something, Charlie Aiken. You ever get it any ideas about just taking off like that? I'm I will go in anywhere. If you did, I'm going anywhere. Never believe me. I will give you three days to get your head on straight, and then it's all going up in a blaze of glory. I'm not going anywhere. If you did, I'm not. Not that he has any books lying around. Is that the criticism? Does that bother you? Well, you haven't. What's the last book you read? God damn it! Just tell me the last book you read. Beverly is a teacher. Teachers read books. I am in the upholstery business. People in the upholstery Just business. Just tell me the last book you read. This kid is concerned about her daddy's whereabouts. She doesn't need to sit here and listen to us. I think we're all concerned about that. Then why the hell are you needling me for? He came back before, and they worked things out. He'll come back again, I know he will. I think this time is different. I think so too. Why? Because back then he... I'm not asking you. Why do you think this time is different? Because I think back then they were trying. Well, that's what I was going to say. Beverly was a very complicated. I know. Stop saying he was. Well, he was, is. Very complicated. In a kind of quiet way. Kind of like Charlotte. Yes, exactly like Charlotte. Beverly is nothing like little Charlie. She just means in her sort of quiet, complicated ways. Little Charlie's not complicated. He's just, she's, she's just unemployed. She, She's an, she's an observer. All she observes is the television. So you can't even see Ivy's point. No. That little Charlie and Beverly share some kind of complication. Honey, you have to be smart to be complicated. That's our kid you're talking about. Are you saying that your, our kid is not complicated? Yes, that's just what I'm saying. What's the matter with you? Your cousin is very smart. Called all the hospitals in November. What 
This is the highway patrol. No, no, not the highway patrolman, the sheriff, the Gilbo boy. Which hospitals did they call? Well, he rattled off a bunch of them. What else did he say? He said the boat's missing. Mom? Oh, no. Well, he sent a patrolman down to the dock to see if anybody had seen Beverly, and Beverly's pontoon boat was missing. Well, he said that there had been a, a few boats stolen in the last little while, so it didn't prove anything, but he was worried. But do you think there is any chance that Beverly loaded his boat onto his trailer and took it out to the I mean, if he... No, if the, he trailer's, somewhere else. the trailer's out back. I saw it when we drove up.
You just don't understand some of the choices that you make. You're 43 years old. 44. 44. And maybe you're too old to have children, and that's fine if you don't want them. Don't you want to find a husband? A husband in Pawhuska? Don't find people where you live. You find them where you work, and you work in a college. Don't you tell me that there aren't people coming in and out of that library every single day. You would have me marry a student, some 18-year-old boy from one of these hate towns. There are teachers on the Tulsa campus, aren't there? There were when your father taught there. Barry was a teacher at TU. Oh, yeah. Environmental studies. <laughs> Barry was a loser. He was not a loser. Well, he dumped you, didn't he? That makes him a loser in my eyes. He did not dump me. It just didn't work out between us. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dear. Please forgive me. <laughs> I will get it straight. But it might have just worked out between the two of you if you just wore some makeup. <laughs> <laughs> How many was that? I wasn't counting. Mm. Oh. Is your mouth burning? Oh, like a son of a bitch. My tongue is on fire. <laughs> Are you supposed to be smoking? Is anybody supposed to be smoking? <laughs> you have cancer of the mouth. I have enough on my mind to worry about that. You getting on me about my smoking. I'm not getting on you. I'll just leave it alone. Are you scared? Of course I'm scared. Your comfort, sweetheart. Thank God. One of my girls stayed close to home. God, in my generation, families stayed together. That was a different time. No kidding. Faye is here. Well, I know that, Dummy, but did you call her? I thought you called her. Maybe I did. I don't, I don't remember. You have a lot on your mind. Maddie Faye, she aims to come in here and tell me what's what. I don't know how Uncle Charlie puts up with her. Well, he smokes a lot of grass. <laughs> he does. He smokes a lot of grass. <laughs> grass? You say grass? <laughs> well, what do you call it? Hey, are you into Clapton now? What? <laughs> Eric Clapton. You have an Eric Clapton album. Oh, how about that album forever? I've never seen it. Oh, well, I like it. Lay down, Sally. It's a good beat. <laughs> and I'm not old, you know. Lights down in the dining room and up on the front porch as Barbara and Bill arrive, carrying suitcases. What's Jean doing? Smoking. I wish she wouldn't encourage that. I haven't encouraged anything. Well, I don't know. There's something a little funny about the way you say smoking, like you admire her for getting hooked at such a young age of 14. Are you ready for this? No. No way. Take a second. What were these people thinking? What people? Well, the jokers who settled this place. <laughs> the Germans, the Dutch, the Irish. I mean, who was the asshole who planted their flag in this dry, hot nothing? Can we fuck the Indians for this? Well, genocide always seemed like such a good idea at the time. I right, need a little hindsight. Well, anyway, if you want me to explain the creepy character of the Midwest, you're asking Wait, me. Wait, this is not the Midwest. Michigan is the Midwest, God knows why. This is the plains, a state of mind, right? It's kind of a spiritual affliction like <laughs> the blues. <laughs> you okay? I'm fine, I got the plague. <laughs> <laughs> what, is she smoking a fucking cigar? She's coming. Jean arrives on the front porch, carrying a suitcase. 
You ready, kiddo? Yeah, I guess. All right. All right. Here it goes. Mom! Hey, everything! Oh my God, the hard cross! Oh my gosh, will you look at this one? Come here and give your Aunt Maddie face some sugar. <laughs> his heart when he moved 
away. That is wildly unfair. Am I going to have to separate the two of you? Well, you know you were Beverly's favorite. Don't pretend that you didn't know that. I don't know that. I would prefer to think my parents loved all their children equally. Oh, and I'm sure you would prefer to think that Santa Claus for all your presents at Christmas too, but it just isn't so. If you have more than one child, you'd realize a parent always has favorites. And Maddie Faye was my mother's favorite. Big deal. I got used to it. You were your daddy's favorite. Great. Thanks. Daddy gave me his blessing, and I didn't even ask for it. That's what he told you. Oh, so now you're going to tell me that the true story, some terrible shit that Daddy talked about behind my back? Hey, everybody's <coughs> a little on edge. Beverly didn't say terrible things. Like, come on. Come back. He just told me that he was disappointed in you because you said it. Is that supposed to be a comment on Bill? Daddy said nothing like that. He thought you had talent. As a writer. Well, if he thought that, and I don't think he did, he was wrong. And anyway, what difference does it make? It's my life, and I can do what I want. I mean, so he was disappointed in me because I have a beautiful family and a great career. Is that what you're telling me that he thought? I mean, it's absolute horseshit. Horseshit. <laughs> horseshit? Let's all say horseshit! Come on, say horse shit, Bill. Horse shit. Bill exits to the kitchen. Are you hot? No. No, are you hot? I mean, literally, are you taking something? A muscle relaxed. Now listen to me. I will not go through this again with you. I don't know what you're talking about. The sideboard calls to the at 3 a.m. about people in your backyard. Oh, there's so much drama. The police all arrested it. You do know what I'm talking about. You spent a goddamn fortune on those pills. Stop yelling. And then you spent another fortune getting off them. It's not the same thing. I don't have a reason. So now it's okay to get hooked because you have a reason? I'm not hooked on anything. I don't know if you are or if you're not. I'm just saying I'm I won't. not. I'm in pain. Because of your mouth? Yes, because of my mouth. It burns from the chemo. There. Whatever. Are you in a lot of pain? Yes, I'm in pain. I've gotten cancer in my mouth. And it burns like bullshit. Beverly's disappeared and you're yelling at me. I'm not yelling. You couldn't come home when I got cancer. But as soon as your father disappeared, you just rushed right back. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You are right. I'm, I'm sorry. Violet cries. Barbara kneels in front of her, takes her hand. You know where I think he is? I think he got some, I think he got some whiskey and uh, a carton of cigarettes and some really good spy novels and he took his boat and he went out and he found a shady space pool close to the shore. I think he's fishing and he's drinking and he's reading and you know, maybe he's even writing a little bit if the moon strikes him. I think he's okay. I think he's safe, and I think he'll be walking through this door any Sweating like in that movie Maria Full of Grace. Did you see that? <laughs> I don't think so. I just mean they don't mind that I smoke pot. Dad doesn't. Mom kind of does. She thinks it's bad for me. I think the real reason it bugs her is because Dad 
dad smokes pot too, and she wishes that he didn't. Dad's much cooler than mom, really. <laughs> well, that's not true. He's just cooler in that way, I guess. <laughs> you sure you don't want to know? <laughs> yes, no, thanks. Yeah, he's really not cooler. <laughs> he and mom are separated right now. I'm sorry. He's fucking one of his students. Which is pretty uncool, if you ask me. I mean, some people would think that's cool, like those dicks who teach with them in the humanities department, because they're all fucking their students, or wish they were fucking their students. I mean, I don't care at all, like, he can fuck whoever he wants, and he's a teacher, and that's who teachers meet students. It's just the way he went about it, he was such a turd, and he didn't give mom a chance to respond or anything. What sucks now is that mom's watching me like a hawk. Like, she's afraid that I will have some post divorce freak out and become a heroin addict and shoot everybody at school. <laughs> or, God forbid, lose my virginity. I don't know what it is about dad splitting that put mom on my hymen patrol. <laughs> I mean, uh, do you have a boyfriend? Me either. I did go with this boy Josh for like almost a year, but he was retarded. Are you close with your parents? They passed away. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's okay. Thank you. Oh fuck no, I feel terrible now. I'm really sorry. It's okay. Are you close with them? Another stupid question there, Jean. Wow. Really? Like, were you close with your parents? <laughs> Not everybody is. Yeah, right? That's what I meant. Thanks. Come on. That's them. Uh-huh. Their wedding picture. Their costumes are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> what are you reading? T.S. Eliot. That's cool. <laughs> Your grandfather wanted to me. Grandpa's weird. Mom freaked when she got the call from Aunt Ida this morning. She just like freaked. I couldn't get her to calm down. It was weird. I mean, I guess it's not weird that she freaked out, but like to see your mom freak out like that, like you've never seen before, and like we're real close, you know? Did you ever see your parents freak out? Yeah, right? So, like, imagine if you did just one day see them, like, totally lose their shit. Just like, whoa. <laughs> I like your necklace. Thank you. Did you make that? My grandma. It's a turtle, right? Uh-huh. Feels like there's something in it. My umbilical cord. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. It's not insanity. That's kind of disgusting. <laughs> it's kind of disgusting. I mean, why would you do it? Is it some kind of like, it's a Cheyenne tradition? You're Cheyenne. Like that movie Pow Wow Highway. Did you see that? <laughs> when a Cheyenne baby is born, their umbilical cord is dry and sewn into this pouch. Turtles for girls, lizards for boys and we wear it for the rest of our lives. Wow. Because if we lose it, our souls belong nowhere. And when we die, our souls will walk the earth looking for where we belong. Don't say anything about mom and dad splitting, okay? Or trying to play this kind of low-key. Look what I found! Isn't that great? We've got copies. Yeah, but I don't think I remember a hardback edition. I forgot there was ever a time they even published poetry in hardback. Hell, I forgot there was even a time that they published poetry at all. I am not going to be able to sleep in this heat tonight. I wonder if this is worth something. I'm sure it's not. Huh? You never know. 
first edition, hardback, mint condition. Was the Academy Fellowship. No, it was the Wallace Stevens Award. That's right, isn't it? Uh -huh. This book was a big deal. It wasn't that big a deal. In those circles, it was. Those were small circles. <laughs> Dedicated to my Violet. That's sweet. Christ. I can't imagine the kind of pressure he must have felt after he wrote this. Probably every word he wrote after this, he must have been thinking, what are they going to say about this? Or, or are they going to compare it to metal art? You know, but at some point you just have to say, to hell with this. And you write something anyway because... Please. Fucking shut up about the Dutton book. What's the matter? Well, you are just dribbling with envy over these 30 poems that my father wrote way back in the fucking 60s. I mean, don't you realize? Don't you hear yourself? No mistake. I have great admiration for these poems. Not envy. Reciting his list of awards. Merely talking about the value. Well, my father didn't write anymore for a lot of reasons, but critical opinion was not one of those. Hard as that might be for you to believe, because I know how important that stuff is to you. What are you attacking me for? <coughs> I haven't done anything. Oh my God, that's what Sissy says. So she can comfort you and reassure you. No, Billy, you haven't done anything. What does that have to do? Why are you bringing that? These are just all symptoms of your male menopause, whether it's you struggling with a creative question or you screwing a girl who still wears a retainer. <gasps> okay. Look. I'm here because I want to be here for you in a difficult time. But I am not going to be held hostage in this room for you to attack me. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to hold you hostage. You really should go then. I'm not going anywhere. I flew to Oklahoma to be with you. So, now you're stuck with me. And her name is Cindy. I know her stupid name. Just give me the courtesy of recognizing when I'm demeaning you. Oh, Violet really has a way of putting you in attack mode, you know it? No, she has nothing to do with it. Oh, don't you believe it? You feel such rage for her that you can't help dishing it in my direction. You understand it hurts to go from sleeping with someone for 23 years to sleeping by myself. I'm here now. Oh, gosh. Men always say shit like that as though the past and the future <coughs> don't exist. <laughs> Can we not make this a gender discussion? Yeah. Men believe that there's nothing but the here and now. No, it's just bullshit because they're avoiding talking about what they are most afraid to say. I'm not necessarily keen on saying things that are going to hurt you. Like what? What? Don't what? say it. No. You know, there is nothing that you can say that would hurt me any more than I'm already hurting. The damage is done. I think you're wrong. I think that you get into this masochistic frame of mind that actually desires to be hurt more than... What? Barbara. Please, we have enough on our hands already with your parents right now. Let's not revisit this. Revisit? When did we visit this in the first place? You pulled the rug out from underneath me. I still don't know what happened. Do I bore you? Intimidate you? Or is this really just about the pleasures of young flesh, teenage pussy? I really need to know. You want to know now? You want to have this discussion now with Beverly missing your mother, crazy as a loon, and your daughter, 20 feet away? Do you really want to do this now? No, you're right. I'll just hunker down to a cozy night's sleep next to my husband. deserves our care and our patience 
and we'll be in a much better frame of mind to talk about this once your father gets home. My father is dead, Bill. Later that night, red and blue police flashers bounce across the exterior of the house. The rest of the house is dark. Jonna, wearing a robe, quietly knocks. Excuse me, it's Jonna. Excuse me. The sheriff's here. They found your father. He's dead. Oh, dear God. Pilot enters. You are Beverly. Here you are. Here you are. Here you are. And he'd surprise me 
with two tickets to Belize, and we kiss. I mean, I kiss my pillow. <laughs> I make out with my pillow. And then I tell him I've been to the doctor's office that afternoon, and I was pregnant. I know how pathetic that all sounds now, but it was innocent enough. And then real life takes over, because it always does. Uh -huh. And things turn out differently than you thought. That pillow was a better husband to me than any real man I'd ever met. This parade of men fails to live up to your expectations. Each of them so much less than Daddy or Bill. I always envied you for finding Bill. And you punish yourself. You tell yourself, it's not your fault you can't find a good one. You've only deluded yourself into thinking they're better than they are. I don't know how well you remember Andrew. Oh, no. I remember. <laughs> well, he's the best example. Here's a guy that I loved so intensely. And everything he did wrong was an opportunity for me to make things right. So if he cheated on me or called me a cunt, I'd say, no, you love him, you love him forever, and here's an opportunity for you to make an adjustment in the way you view the world. Well, I can't tell you the first moment that I looked myself in the mirror and I said, okay, moron, and I walked out, but it set off this whole period of reflection just swamped in this sticky recollection. Where had I gone wrong? How had I screwed up? And before you know it, you can't move forward. You can't move forward because you're just like suspended there. You can't stop thinking backwards. And that's when I got into all those books and discussion uh, yeah. groups. Psychology, right? Something like that? Yes, yes, exactly. Until one day, I just I just threw it all out. I just said, no, it's me. It's just me, here and now, with my music on the stereo, my glass of wine and bloomers, my cat. I don't need anything else. I can live life myself. And I, I threw myself into my work. I got my realtor's license. I sold a lot of houses. And that's when I met Steve. That's how it happens, you know? <laughs> you only really find it when you're not looking for it. Suddenly you turn around and there it is. And the things you thought were so important really aren't that important. I mean, when I was making out with that pillow, I never imagined anyone like Steve. Here he is, you know, this kind of chamber of commerce, country club kind of guy, 10 years older than me, but a thinker. I mean, he's been around. And he's just, oh, he's just so good. I mean, he's a good man. He's good to me, and he's good but for me. And he's got this great business. And it's because he has these great ideas, and he's unafraid of making his ideas into a reality. He's not afraid of doing. I think men on the whole are a lot better at that than women. Doing, just doing, just jumping in right or wrong. Well, figure out where all means later. <laughs> and the best thing about him, the best thing about him for me, is that now what I think about is now. I live now. My focus, my life, my world is now. I don't even care about the past anymore. The mistakes I made, the way I used to think, I won't go back there. And I've figured out that you can't plan your future either. Because as soon as you do, something happens. Some, some terrible thing happens. Like your brother drowning himself. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I mean. That is not something you plan for. There's no contingency. You take it as it comes, right or wrong. Steve had a very important business meeting with some big wig government guys who would be very important to him. But as soon as we got to the call about Daddy, he called and canceled the meeting. He has his priorities. Here. And you know what the kicker is? You know what the kicker is? What's the kicker? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Belize for our honeymoon. Oh, sorry. Hot flash. I mean, I never told him about my little Belize fantasy. He just up and surprised us with tickets oh, for us. So what was happening? Baked mm. chicken, fried potatoes, green bean casserole, and green tea. 
Um, did, did Betty Faye bring her green bean casserole? Oh, I don't know. Should I nominate it? No, no, it's great. Hers is impeccable. I mean, can you believe that? That is great, Karen. So, I know you just met him, but do you get a read off of him? Do you like him? said two words with one another. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, but do you get a feel he for him? You still get a feel. Nice. He is, he is! <laughs> but it doesn't matter what I think. I'm not the one who's marrying him. Well, you come to the wedding, don't you? Yeah. Um, when is that again? New Year's Day. <laughs> One reason we chose New Year's is I know you and Bill have a break from school and it's important to me that you're there. Sarasota, right? No, Miami. Did you know I moved to Miami? Yes, right. I did that. That's for Steve's <laughs> yes. business. Yes. So, right. Look, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm finally happy. I've been really unhappy for most of my life. I doubt you've been aware of that. Lies have let us apart in me and Ivy, and I guess we haven't been as close as some families. And we really need to talk about mom. We I know, but I think one reason for that is I haven't wanted to live my unhappiness in full view of my family. But now I'm just really happy, and I want for us to make, get to know each other better. Yes. Yes. Mm. Oh. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Christ, where are they with the wine now? And you see? There's another example. Steve doesn't know a soul here, but he jumped right in the car with Bill and Jean to go get the wine. He is family. Lights crossfade to the second floor landing. Ivy enters, pursued by Violet, who carries a dress and a pair of high heels. Maddie Faye follows, rooting through a box of photographs. I really don't want to. It will kill you to try it on. Well, this is a sweet one, Vi. I find this a tinge morbid, quite frankly, I about mean. it. And I'm not prepared to look at these photographs right now. This is a beautiful dress and it's very modern. It's not my style, Mom. Where was this taken? We don't have a style. That's the whole point. Vi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, New York City. That, that's from the first book tour in New York. You mean I don't like your style? I have a style of my own. New York City, 1964. Honey, you wore a suit to your father's funeral? A woman doesn't wear a suit to a funeral? God, you're weird. It's a black suit. Yeah, you looked like a magician's assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's been talking about moving to New York. Why do you feel it necessary that we always... picture that? Don't discourage her. She wouldn't last a day in that city. They tear her apart. Why do you feel it necessary to kill that kid? Why do you feel it necessary to insult me? Stop being so sensitive. I never slept. For my brother-in-law's funeral, a noon service? I'm sure there's more to the story than that. You shouldn't make excuses for her. That's what Charlie does. He always has to. Just, oh, she overslept. Lottie dog. We'll pick her up at the bus station. That's You're so says. hard on her. It's 37 years old. You can't drive. Oh, she's a little different. I'll get I think you're being really hard. Who can't drive? I, I mean, I've seen a chink drive. Will you take off that cheap suit and try this on for me, please? Cheap? Did you call this cheap? This is the most expensive item of clothing I own. Well, I don't see what difference that makes how much you paid for it. A suit of armor is expensive too, but that doesn't make it appropriate. Why are you trying to give all your clothes away? I don't plan to spend the rest of my days walking around and looking at what used to be. I want that. I want the shit in that office gone. I want all my clothes gone that I'm never going to wear again. I want it all gone. I mean, look at these fucking high heels. Can you picture me in these? If, even if I didn't fall on my face, can you imagine anything less attractive? My swollen ankles and varicose veins? And my toenails, good God. <laughs> Any more they could dig through cement. Maddie <laughs> Faye holds a photograph in front of Violet. Is this the idea? Takes the photograph. Look at me, look at me. You're beautiful, Mom. I was beautiful. You're still not anymore. Oh, You're still now beautiful, Mom. Oh, no. Now, that's one of those little lies that we all tell ourselves to give ourselves comfort. Don't you believe it. Women are beautiful when they're young, and that's it, not after. <laughs> now, men can still preserve their sex appeal well into old age. You know, I don't mean those men that go walking around in shorts with those little purses around their waists. <laughs> Some men can maintain if they embrace
embrace it in cragginess or weary masculinity. <laughs> Women just get old and fat and wrinkly. I'm still very sexy. Thank you very much. You are as sexy as a wet cardboard box. <laughs> you and me both. Women aren't sexy when they're old. <laughs> Now try this dress on, Ivy. I'm sorry, I won't. Listen to me. You don't know how to attract a man, and I do. That's something that I've always been good at. I have someone, all right? I have someone. Now leave it alone. Lights cross fade to the front porch as Jean zips inside. <coughs> races to the TV, turns it on, finds a channel, and sits in probably close. Bill and Steve Heidebrecht follow, dressed in dark suits and laden with grocery cup bags. Uh, no, you know, we maintain the accounts offshore just until we get approvals. You mean to get around approvals. To get around approvals until we get approvals. There's a lot of red tape, a lot of bureaucracy. Now, I don't know how much you know about Florida politics. Only what I read, and that's... Uh, well, right, right. And this kind of business in particular is... I'm uh, sorry, what is that business again? I don't uh, You know, it's essentially security work. The situation in the Middle East is perpetually dangerous, uh, so there's a tremendous amount of money involved. Security work? You mean mercenary? Barbara enters from the kitchen. Give me the wine. She pulls a bottle of wine from Bill's grocery bag. I think of it more like a missionary than a mercenary. <laughs> Is that what you were in such a hurry to come home for? Yeah. What the hell is on TV that's so important that you can't... Phantom of the Opera, 1925, Wanji. Cool. For God's sake, Jean, you can get that in any video store. No, but they're showing it with the scene in color restores. No kidding. You mean, that's uh, the scene called, what is that scene called, sweetie? The, the masked ball? Yeah. Now, let me make sure I got this right. When you threw a fit about going to the store with your father, hey, look at me. When you were so very distraught about the start time for your grandpa's funeral, was this your concern? The phantom of a fucking opera? I guess. Barbara gives Jean a withering look. Exit. I'll take these to the kitchen. Bill takes Steve's grocery bag and follows Barbara into the kitchen. Movie ball? Yeah. Right. Right, me too. You seen this one? It's really good. You know, Cheney designed his own makeup. I know. Mm. <laughs> Apparently very painful. You see, he ran these two fishing lines from up under his nostrils and he pulled them up under it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Seen any of the remakes? I've seen the one with Claude Rains. Mm. Right, right. Pretty bad, huh? Phantom's queer. That's a problem. <laughs> I don't remember it so much. I was just a kid. Yeah, right. Well, uh, hey, you're not a kid anymore, I guess. What? I say you're not a kid anymore. No. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so what are you, about, uh, 17? 15. Right, right. 15. Hey, that's no kid. No, you're no kid. You know what I was doing when I was 15? What? Cattle processing. You know what that is? It doesn't sound good. <laughs> Slaughterhouse. Sanitation. Slaughterhouse sanitation. <laughs> That's disgusting. Yeah, well, yeah. I would recommend it. But hey. <laughs> Put food on the table, huh? Huh? <laughs> Whoa! Wait a minute, what, what is that smell? Food from the kitchen. Mm -mm, no, no, that's not what I'm smelling. What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? 
Uh, I think you're smelling food from the kitchen. Oh, uh, guess again. happen to be in luck because I just happen to have some really tasty shit. <laughs> and I just happen to have some really good connects and I really am gonna hook you up. Well, that would be great because mm -hmm. I just smoked my last bowl and I really need to get fucked up. You what? I really <laughs> need to get fucked up. You really need to get what? <laughs> fucked up? You really need to get fucked what? Yeah. 
said he overslept. I don't know. I'm so sorry. Please. I just know you've had one of the worst days of your life, and I'm sorry if I made it any worse. They're on to me. What? Not us, just me. I told them I was seeing somebody. I didn't tell them who, but I wanted you to know in case there were any questions. All right. I mentioned New York to Mom, only you know that I was considering a move. She told me. She was typically approving, I bet. You know what? I think it's better this way, just letting them know piece by piece. What? Charlotte? I adore you. Jean doesn't understand all this. Do you think she has any concept? Phantom of the... Oh, come on, don't you remember what it was like when you were 14 years old? It's old enough to exhibit a little character. Yeah, but then I guess that is something you learn from your parents normally. That's a shot across my bow. I miss something. Really? Instilling character, our burden as parents. <laughs> I got that part. Mm -hmm. And you really haven't been much of a parent lately, so it's not to expect. Hey, just because you and I are struggling with this Gordian knot doesn't make me any less of a parent. Nice. Gordian knot. Well, from her 14-year-old point of view, she might view it differently. She might consider it abandoned. Oh, come on. You know, she might see her father as uh, absent. Or maybe not present. Or maybe even a fucking son of a bitch. Jean is a little bit more sophisticated than that, don't you Pretty think? Pretty fucking sophisticated, the restored whatever of the Phantom of the Opera. I know that makes your dick hard. Barbara! Precocious little shit. I'm not defending her. I'm not defending her. I'm not defending her. She's a selfish son of a bitch for a father. Like, set so be a father and help me. I am her father. God damn it. You are a father in absentia. You are a father in name only. I have not forsook my responsibility. <laughs> is forsaken. Big shot. <laughs> Actually, for Sook is also an acceptable usage. <laughs> well, for Sook, you and the horse you rode in on. <laughs> so, we have to fight on your terms then? On topic one moment, whimsical insults the next. All of it, when it suits you. Yeah, I think we covered this around uh, your tree, Bill. You're the master of time and space, I'm the spastic comrade. I'm sick of being fair. And I'm sick of the notion of the enduring female. I am just sick and tired of it. See where it's gotten me. So just blow up. Because while you're going through your fifth puberty, the world is falling apart, and I can't handle it. And more importantly, your kid can't handle it. Our kid is just trying to struggle with this goddamn madhouse you dragged her into. This house is my home. Think about it. Jean is here because this is a family event. She's here because she's a buffer between you and the shrill insanity of your mother. You would have a lot more credibility if you had any credibility. <laughs> you can't resist, can you? You are a very easy mark. You are so goddamn self-righteous. Well, you must have known that something would have happened when you started porking pity longstocking. You must have expected a little self-righteousness, <laughs> a smidgen of indignation on my part. Maybe I split because of it. This is your confession, then. When you unload all... And you're thoughtful, Barbara. But you're not open. And you're passionate. But you're hard. And you're a good, decent, funny, wonderful woman. And I love you. But you're a pain in the ass. <laughs> Is it dinner time yet? Dinner's ready. Hey, you know, every time you light a cigarette, the food comes out. <laughs> oh. Hey, what's the last time someone's mowed the lawn? Mom, I'm there? so sorry. Oh, look who I just to took Steve out to see the old court. Have you been out there? Sorry. Hey, I'm part of the you. Yeah, I'm good. 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 Ye
the electricity must have gone out. I woke up and you popped the lazy new. You can't even go through it all. There's no unfortunate. Well, I know how I get through a time like this. I think to myself, I can't eat a bite. I can't eat a bite. I'm coming here, I'm starving. Oh, this is so lovely. Oh, Jonah did it all. Yeah, the chicken looks tasty just now. Mom, let's eat! Will you bust the casserole, please? Hey, can I pour anyone some wine? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I'll take some. Little Charlie spills his pitcher of water. Oh, Jesus! Oh, it's wonderful! Oh, Jesus, no! Don't have to go to the kitchen for paper towels. God damn clumsy goof. Mom, I'm oh, sorry. Right, the right, nobody's hurt. Little Charlie helps John clean up the mess. Mom, Jesus, I'm sorry. It was just an accident. You know, it's not a party until somebody spills something. Jean, <laughs> did you get any chicken? No, I don't sorry. eat meat. Oh, good for you. You don't eat meat? <laughs> no. Don't eat meat? <laughs> Who wants chicken? Here. Charlotte, have some chicken. Mm -hmm. Just put it on her plate for her. She's liable to burn the house down. All right, my baby. Violet enters with a framed photograph of her and Beverly. Barbara, will you put it there? Yeah. <coughs> That's nice. That's, That's sweet. It's very nice. Yeah. Jonna did this all. Yay, Jonna. <laughs> See you gentlemen have all stripped down to your shirt fronts. We were having a funeral dinner, not a cock fight. Someone should probably say Grace Barbara, you do it? No, I don't think so. That's not a big deal. Charlie should say, Grace, you're uh, the patriarch around here now. I am? Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess I am. By default. Okay. Dear Lord, we ask that you watch over this family in this sad time. Oh Lord, that you bless this good woman and keep her in your, in your grace. A cell phone rings, playing the theme from Sanford and Son. He quickly picks in his pocket, finds the phone, checks the caller ID. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I gotta take this. We ask that you watch over Beverly too, as he, as he, as he makes this journey. We thank thee, O Lord, that we are able to join together to pay tribute to this fine man in his house with his beautiful family, his three beautiful daughters. We are truly blessed in our, our fellowship, our togetherness, our, our fellowship. Thank thee for the food, O oh Lord, that we can share this food and replenish our bodies with, with, with nourishment. We ask that you help us get better, be better, be better people. See, re enter, snapping his phone shut. Sorry about that, folks. Amen. Amen. Let's we recognize now more than ever the power, the, the joy of family. And we ask that you bless and watch over this family. Amen. 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 Let's eat. They begin to eat. Ooh. You know, this food is spectacular. It's so yes, good. It you like your food, Mom? <laughs> oh, I haven't even tried much of it anymore. Jonna cooked this whole meal by herself. Mm -hmm. wow. Jonna cooked this whole meal by herself. Oh, well, that's what she's paid for. <laughs> Jean, don't you all know that that's that she's being paid, right? Jean, so I'm curious. When you say don't eat, you don't eat meat, no, she. You mean, yeah. You mean you don't eat meat of any kind, right? And this is for health reasons, or when you eat meat, you ingest an animal fear. It's fear. How do you do that? We don't eat fear. Sure you can. I mean, even if you don't sort of think of it spiritually, what happens to you when you feel afraid? Doesn't your body produce all sorts of chemical reactions? 
It does. Yeah. 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 Adrenaline and yeah. And Your body goes through this whole chemical process when it experiences fear. Yeah. And cortisol. Yeah. Particularly like strong mortal fear. You know, like when your heart races. Oh and yeah. You sweat. Oh yeah. Okay. Sure. Do you think an animal experiences fear? You bet it does. So when you eat an animal, <laughs> you're eating all that fear it felt when it was slaughtered to make food. Wow. Uh, right. You know, uh, I used to work in a processing factory, and there was a lot of fear flying around that place. God, you mean I've been eating fear three times for 16 years? Years? Two times a day. This <laughs> one won't, won't eat a meal unless there's meat in it. I guess it was the way I was raised, but it just doesn't seem like a legitimate meal unless it has some meat. If I make a pasta dish of some kind, he'll just be like, okay, that was good for an appetizer, now where's the meat? <laughs> <laughs> where's the meat? Isn't that one of those commercials that, that some old lady used to say, where's the meat? Beef. Where's the beef? Where's the meat? Where's the meat? Where's the meat? I sure thought the services were lovely. <laughs> yes, yes, they were. Uh, yeah, you know, the preacher did a fine job. I give it a. Yeah. Really? Well, I would have preferred an open casket. That was just not possible. <coughs> well, today was the send-off that, that Beverly should have gotten if he died back in uh, 74. <laughs> Lots of talk about how you treat and teaching, and he hasn't written a poem since 1974, and he, he didn't like teaching worth a damn. Nobody talked. Good stuff. Man, was a world-class alcoholic. Nobody told that story about that time that he was invited, wrangled into giving this talk at the TU alumni dinner, and he drank an entire bottle of rum. And he got up to give the speech, and he fouled himself. He, he came back to the table with the Yeah, huge I can't table. imagine why no one told him that. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get invited back, that's for sure, to more alumni dinners. I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, I don't know a lot about poetry, but I thought his uh, poems were extraordinary. And uh, your reading was very fun. Thank you. Who are you? Mom, <laughs> this is my fiancé, Steve. Oh. I introduced you at the church. Steve, hi there. That's peculiar, Karen, to bring a date to your father's funeral. I know the poetry was good, but I just wouldn't uh, have really considered this date material. He's, he, he's not my date. He's my fiancé. We're getting married on New Year's. Man, these potatoes. In Miami. <laughs> and I hope you can make it. I don't really see that happening. Do you? Steve, right? Uh, yes, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. You ever uh, been married before? That's personal. Yeah, no, no, I don't mind. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, more have... than once? Well, three times, actually. Um, well, you, three times. you pretty much have it down by now, then, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I that one peg, Maddie Fetty, didn't I? I mean... Look at him, you can just tell that he's been married. I took Steve out to City Hill for it. You know, it's gone. It's been gone for years. Well, that made me so sad. Daddy said it was full of rats. Well, our old fort we used to play cowboys and Indians. Shame on you, Karen. You, you shouldn't say you play cowboys and Indians, you say you play cowboys and Native Americans, right, Barb? What are you taking? What? What are you taking? What pills oh, are you taking? Oh, let me alone. <coughs> you okay, Uncle? <coughs> what is it? Yeah. What is it? <coughs> Just got a big bite of fear. <laughs> <laughs> Check it, my boy. 
a fine idea. Well, the silver's worth a pretty penny, but maybe I'll sell it to you for cheaper than what I could get at an auction. Oh, gee, and you might never get around to the auction, and then we could just have it for free when you die. Barbara, you might at that. Where are you living now, Bill? You want this old sideboard? I beg your pardon? You and Barbara are separated, right? Or have you already gotten divorced? We're separated. You thought you could slip that by me, didn't you? What's the matter with you? Truth is, sweetheart, you can't compete with a younger woman. There's no way to compete. One of these unfair things in life is, is there a younger woman involved? I think you've talked enough about this subject, I think. Yes. Oh, yes, you see. Odds are against you, babe. Mom believes women don't grow more attractive with age. Oh, I disagree. I didn't say they don't I... grow more attractive. I said they get ugly. <laughs> and it's not really a matter of opinion, Karen. You just started to prove it yourself. You know, three days ago, I had to identify my father's corpse. Now I sit here and listen to you attack viciously every member of this family. Attack this family? Have you ever been attacked in your sweet, spoiled life? Not if they tell her about tax. Tell her what an attack really looks like. Bye. Please. Now settle down, Mom. I'm here. No, 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 no. Stop. Just stop telling me to settle down. I'm not a goddamn invalid. Honey, this, this woman came to my rescue when one of my mother's gentleman friends attacked me with a claw hammer. This woman has dents in her skull from hammer blows. We know you had a rotten childhood, Mom. Who didn't? You don't know. You do not know. None of you know, except this woman and that man we buried today. Sweet girl, sweet Barbara, my heart breaks for you every time that you felt pain, and I wish I could have shielded you from it. But if you think for a solitary second that you can fathom the pain that that man endured in his life, you've got another thing coming. Do you know where your father lived from the time he was four till he was ten? Do you? With his mother and his father, in a fucking car! Now, what else do you want to know about your rotten childhood? That's the crux of the biscuit. Now, your father and I, we were the first ones in our family to, to get through high school and graduate, and you girls, given a college education, taken for granted, no doubt. You, where did you wind up? What do you do? 
And what do you do? And who are you? Jesus, you worked as hard as your father and me. You'd all be president. You bet it. Never had any real problems. You just, you just make them up, your problems yourself. What are you screaming at us? Just time that we told some truths around here. That's all damn fine day. Tell the truth. Well, the truth is, I'm getting full. Amen. <laughs> There's dessert, too. Oh, I saw her making those pies. They look so good. I have a truth to tell. Kid <laughs> speaks. What do you say, kid? I, I have a truth. I, well, show me. I, I forgot to set the alarm. The power didn't go out. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry, everybody. I, I, excuse me. Gave up a long time ago. She's your project now, Charlie. Charlotte. Her name is Charlotte. The family eats inside. Poor Ivy. Poor thing. Please, Mom. Poor baby. Please! She's always had a feeling for the underdog. Don't be mean to me right now. Who's got this idea that I'm mean all of a sudden? Please, Mama. I told you, I'm just telling the you are drug addict. Well, that is the truth. That's what I'm getting at. Everybody listen. I'm a drug addict. I'm addicted to drugs. Pills, especially downers. These little babies, they're my best fucking friends. Try to take them away from me and I'll eat you alive. Give me those goddamn pills. Eat you alive. Barbara Lennon is a bottle of pills. She and Violet wrestle with it. Violet wins the rest of the pills away from Barbara. Violet shakes the pill bottle, taunting Barbara. Barbara snaps. Greens lunges again, grabs Violet by the hair, pulls her up, toppling chairs. They crash through the house, pandemonium, screaming. Barbara strangles Violet. Barbara! Barbara, you can't do that! Shut up! Okay, kill Ray. Johnny, you go with me into the kitchen. Bill, you take Jean and Ivy upstairs. Remember how to do this, right? Yeah. Okay, so go through everything. Every counter, every drawer, every box. If you see anything suspicious, just throw it in the box and we'll take it out of here. Okay, you understand? You should do it. You go to mom, give her a dark cup of coffee, a wet towel, and uh, listen to her bullshit for a while. Uh, Karen, uh, would you call Dr. Burke? What do you want to say? Tell him that we have a sick woman. You can't do this! You cannot do this, Barbara! You don't get it, do you? I'm running things now! and that I was looking forward to the day when he would be slightly dead. He said he didn't know that she was taking so much, and that's why he's eager to put her in an institution, because he's afraid of a malpractice suit. I told him I was considering it. You're responsible shithead. Well, why did he write so many prescriptions? Doesn't he know what she does? It wasn't does? just him. She has a doctor in every place. Here's how she does it. She goes to the doctor for back spasms and gets a prescription. Then a day or two later, she goes back, 
She says she lost her pills. He writes her another one. Then the next week, she pulls muscle, more pills. And she, more pills, over and over and over, until she goes one too many times. And he says, I'm not prescribing anymore. And then she pulls the sheet of prescription receipts out of her purse and says, oh, go to the AMA and have your ass in court for over-prescribing me. <laughs> she generally threatens these men, and they give in to her. So you knew this was going on again. It, remember that stunt she pulled when we checked her into the uh, psych ward? Which time? I wasn't there. Okay, so like, big speech, right? She's going clean sacrifice she's going to make for her family. Right, right, right. She's let her family down, but now she wants to prove she's a good family now. Right. So, she smuggles Darvisette into the ward. In her vagina. <laughs> she gave us that whole speech while she was clenching a bottle of pills in her coach, for God's sake. Did you just see I'm coach? That's so the phrase, mom's pussy's a little gauche. You're more comfortable with you. Know, right? What word would you have us use for our mother's vagina? I don't know. <laughs> mom's <laughs> beaver, mother's box. God. Oh, Barbara. <laughs> I'm sorry about you, girl. Me too, Barb. If I had my way, you would have never known. Well, do you think it's a temporary thing, or do you think you really didn't know? No, it's so much stupid. Married a long time. Well, that's one thing about mom and dad. You gotta tip your cap to anyone who can stay married that long. Karen, he killed himself. Yeah, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Is something going on between you and little Charlie? I don't know that I'm comfortable talking about that. Because you know she is our first cousin. Mm -hmm. Give me a break. What about children? Karen, I'm almost 45. I put those thoughts behind me a long time ago. And besides, I had a hysterectomy the year before last. Why? Cervical cancer. <gasps> I didn't know. I never died. I didn't tell anybody. Except Charlotte. That's when it started between her and me. Well, why not? Why wouldn't you tell me? I hear those comments from mom for the rest of my life. She doesn't need any more excuses to treat me like some damaged thing. Well, you could have told us. You weren't going to tell us about you and Bill. Well, that is different. Why? Because it's you and not me? No, no, because divorce is an embarrassing public admission of defeat. Oh. The cancer's fucking cancer. You can't do anything about that. I mean, we're your sisters. We might have given you some comfort. I don't feel the connection very keenly. Well, I feel very connected to both of you. <laughs> Karen, you're never around. You haven't been around for years. We never see you. I still feel that connection. Mm -hmm. You think if you tether yourself to this place in mind only, you don't need to actually appear? Oh, you know me that well. No. <clears throat> That's my point. I can't perpetuate these myths of family and sisterhood any longer. For all these people, some of us accidentally connected by genetics, random selection of cells, nothing more. Oh, when did you get so cynical? That's funny, coming from you. Well, you know. Bitter, sure, but random selection of cells? <laughs> Maybe my cynicism flowered with the realization that the obligation of caring for our parents was mine alone. Don't give me that. I participated in every goddamn. Until you had enough and got out, you and Karen both. I had a family to think about. That's a cheap excuse. As if by having a child, you were alleviated of all responsibility. Oh, so now I'm being criticized for procreating. No, I am not criticizing. Do what you want. You did. Karen did. And you didn't. It's not my fault. That's right. So don't lay this sister thing on me now. I don't buy it. I haven't bought it for a long time. When I leave here and leave for good, I won't feel any more guilty than you two have. Who says we don't? You're living here? Charlotte and I are going to New York. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in New York? We have plans. Like what? None of your business. <laughs> what about Mom? What about her? Do you feel comfortable leaving Mom here? Do you? You think she was difficult when Dad was alive? Think about what it's going to be like now. You can't imagine the cumulative effect after a month, after a year, after many years. You can't imagine. And even if you could, you can only imagine for yourself. Yourself, the favorite. Try 
Daniels. Mom pulled that on me the other day you know, about Dad that I was his favorite. Well, that's not true. You weren't his favorite. I was. You were Mom's favorite. What? Thanks, Ivy. You don't think so? Good God, Barb, I've lived my life by that standard. Well, he said, she said that we, he was very upset when we went to Boulder. Mom was upset, not Dad. She was convinced that you left to get away from her. Well, if you were Dad's favorite, you must take his suicide kind of personally. Dad killed himself for his own reasons. Like what reasons? I won't presume. Aren't you angry? No. Dad is accountable to no one but himself. If he's better off now, and I don't doubt that he is, who are we to begrudge him that? <laughs> his daughters. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I am fucking furious. I mean, that selfish son of a bitch. I mean, his solitude, his melancholy. I mean, he, he could have helped me, us. I mean, as all he, he could have included us. He could have talked to us. You might not have liked what you heard. What if the truth of the matter is that Beverly Weston never liked you? Never liked any of us. Never had any special feeling of any kind for any of his children. No, you know, that's not true. Why? How? Do you? Well, you said you were his favorite. Only because he recognized the kindred spirit. You know, that little theory, that accidental genetics. And it just doesn't fly, not with me. I mean, I believe he had a responsibility to something greater than himself. I mean, we all do. Good luck with that. You know, I just never knew that your worldview was that dark. <gasps> Karen, you live in Florida. When are you and Char little Charlie leaving? It's weeks, if not days. And her name is Charlotte. Are you going to tell Mom? I'm still trying to figure that out. Well, what about your job, your house? I have been taking care of myself a lot longer than you've been in charge. Karen, you're going back to Miami, right? Yes. Wow. There you go, Mark. You want to know what we're going to do about Mom? We're leaving. You want to stay and deal with her? That's your decision. You don't like it? That's your prerogative. But nobody gets to point a finger at me. Nobody. Hello. Oh, hi. Am I interrupting you? Do you need anything to drink or eat? No. No. You want some more coffee? No, no, I'm fine, honey. You girls all together in this house. Hearing your voices outside my door just gives me the warmest feeling in my heart. I get embarrassed just thinking about it. <laughs> These walls, they must have heard a lot of secrets. Secret crushes, secret schemes, right? The province of teenage girls. Now, I cannot imagine anything more bittersweet or delicate. And there's something about you girls that I have always identified with. No matter how old a woman gets, she's hard-pressed to let go of that part of herself. That smells good. It's apple. Do you want some? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, did I ever tell you the story of Raymond Claus? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it wasn't much of a story, but he was this teenage boy that I had a crush on when I was about 13. He was a real rough-looking boy, kind of messy hair and ripped up Levi's and was terrible underbite. But he had the most beautiful pair of cowboy boots from the shiny chocolate leather. And while he was up out of those boots, he would just march around strutting with his elbows and arms, puffed up and cock -shore. I got into my mind. I could just get a girly pair of those same boots that Raymond would ask me to go steady. He'd see me walking around in those boots, he'd go, woo, that's the gal for me. So I found a pair of those boots in a shop window downtown. I just about went crazy. I would stay up all night long just praying for those boots. Imagine myself rehearsing these conversations that I'd have with Raymond after he saw me walking in the boots. And I must have begged my mama a hundred times for those boots. Vi, she'd say, what would you like for Christmas? 
not say, I'd give it all up if I could just have a pair of those boots. Or I could, you know. So she started to like, give these little hints. She had put this big box, boot-sized box, under the Christmas tree, all wrapped in fancy papers. So, Fine, now don't you go cheating on me and open up that box before Christmas morning. And she had this little smile on her face. So Christmas morning, I was up like a shot. I just ran down to the Christmas tree and I ripped open that box and there was a pair of boots, all right. Men's work boots. Torn out toes and caked in mud dog shit. Oh mama oh, Lord, she she laughed for days. Please don't tell me that's the end of the story. Well, yeah, that's the end of the story. You never got the boots? No. Oh. Mm -hmm. That is the worst story I have heard. It makes me want a nice heartwarming claw hammer story. Oh, my oh. mama was a nasty, mean old lady. I guess that's where I get it from. You're not nasty and mean. You're our mama and we love you. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Oh, hey, I just need a minute to with mom. Okay, I just need a couple of people. Sure. How's your head? I'm sorry. Please, honey. You know, it's important that I say this. I, I lost my temper. I just went way too far. It was the day, the funeral, the pills. I was spoiling her fight and you gave it to me. So truce. Truce. Don't you want to look into a rehab center or oh. something like that? Oh, no, I can't do that again. I can do this by myself. I'm pretty sure I can. Really? Well, you got rid of all the pills, didn't you? All that would be fine. Well, I don't have that many hiding places. I'll talk about that. Well, you want to search me? No. <laughs> well, if you got rid of the pills, then I can do this. We're just going to take me a few days to get my legs on me. You know, I, I know this must be really, really difficult. All this time, all this stuff, and uh, I, I just, I just want you to know you're not alone. How can I help? I don't need help, but I want to help. I don't need your help, Mom. I don't need your help. I've been through these things by myself before, and I, I know how it goes. Everybody. After they do all the talking, then they just go back to their homes with all this nonsense. And I know that. So I'll manage. Don't worry about me. I'll get by. Is the coast clear? Never very. Can I sit with you? I wish you would. I almost blew it, didn't I? Are you mad at me? Nope. I was trying to be brave. I know. I just, I wanted everyone to know that I got what I always wanted, and that means I'm not a loser. Hey. Hey. You're my hero. Come here. I wrote something for you. Television, it's rotted her brain. 
I'm sure that's not true. Isn't that coach you watched the other day? I don't remember. You do so remember some dumb game show about people swapping wives. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. Too bad there isn't a job where they pay to sit around watching TV all day. Mighty Faye. But I guess you wouldn't like television, now that it constituted having a job. Mighty Faye, it's been a long day. Did I tell you she got fired from a shoe store? Mighty Faye! We are gonna go get in the car right now and go home. And if you say one more mean thing about that kid, I'm going to kick your bony Irish ass onto the highway. <laughs> you hear me? What the hell did you say? You kids, go outside. I just don't under understand you. I look at you and your sister and the way you talk to people. And I don't understand it. I just can't understand why people can be respectful of one another. I don't think there is any justification for it. My family didn't treat each other. This was your family. You had better not say anything about my family right now. I mean it. We buried the man today I love very much. And whatever faults he may have had, he was a good, kind, decent person. And to hear you tear at your own kid on a day like today dishonors Beverly's memory. We've been married for 38 years. I would not trade them for, for anything. But if you cannot find in, in your heart a generous spot for your kid, we are not going to make it to 39. Cigarette? Oh, not like what years ago. Me too. <laughs> Just sound like a good idea. Okay. Or <laughs> I was just wondering. At that awful dinner today, that horrible dinner. I, I was thinking. Well, it seemed like there might be something going on between Ivy and little Charlie. I don't really know what to say here. I mean, do you know if that's true? Look, can you just tell me if that's true? Yes, it's true. Okay. That just can't happen. This is going to be very difficult to explain. You know, Ivy and little Charlie, they march to their own drummer. And, you know, obviously I know this will be toughest on you. But, but, you know, I think that they are very much in love, or at least they think they are. And Honey. that's the difference, really. Now, I must have not be terrified about what you and Mom are thinking, I'm sure. And I know it's pretty unorthodox for cousins to get together, at least these They're days. not cousins. But believe it or not, it's no, not as unorthodox. Listen to me. They're not cousins. Beg your pardon. They're not cousins. They're sisters. Half-sisters. Ivy and little Charlie are sisters. Little Charlie is Beverly's child. Do you see what I'm saying to you? Ivy and little Charlie are sisters. <laughs> no, that's not. No. No, <laughs> that's wrong. You know. Okay, well this may be. Oh. <coughs> are you sure? Avenue. Okay. Yes. Who else knows this? I do. I know. You do. And little Charlie doesn't. I bet Char Uncle Charlie doesn't suspect. We haven't discussed it. What? We haven't discussed it. Okay. Did Dad know? Look, I'm. I'm not proud of this. Oh, really? I mean, you people really amaze me. I mean, what, what were you drunk? Or was it some kind of blessing to you? Listen, I know it's hard for you to believe looking at me, knowing me all these years as your old Aunt Maddie Faye. But there's more to me than that. I'm more than that, sweetheart. 
Charlie's right, as usual. I don't know why I'm so disappointed in little Charlie. I guess I'm more disappointed for her than anything else. I made a bad mistake a long time ago. I paid for it, fair enough. But the mistake ends here. If I be found out about this, it would destroy her. Oh, I'm sure as hell not going to tell her. You, you have to be the one to stop her. You have to stop them. Why me? Because you said you were running things. Show me yours. I don't want to see yours. You ever seen one? Yes. No, I'm not a virgin. No. You're not? Okay. Not technically. Well, no, technically I am. I mean, not theoretically. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> that changes everything. Um, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. You're going to get us both in trouble. You see, I am white and over 30. I can get in trouble. Steve 
of the dining room into the living room. They get dressed and pack their bags. Barbara, Bill, Jean, and John remain in the dining room. Oh my God, do you fucking believe that crazy prick? I know, I know. Settle down. Settle down, son of a bitch. This is a sociopath. What the fuck is going on? Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. What is the matter with you? With us? Um, will you please stop freaking out? Listen, please, sweetheart. We need to know what went on here. Nothing went on. Can we not make a federal case out of everything? I couldn't sleep. I came down to the kitchen for a drink and he came in. End of story. That is That's not, not the end, end of the story. story. We smoked hot, all right. We smoked a little pot and we were goofing around and then everything just went haywire. What did I tell you about so smoking that shit? What did I say? I don't think Look so. at you two. You're both so ridiculous. He didn't do anything, okay? And even if he did, what's the big deal? The big deal, Jean, is that you're 14 years old. Which is only a few years younger than you like him. Barbara slaps Jean. I hate you. And I hate you, you little freak. Jean tries to exit. Bill grabs her. Let me go. Jean pulls free, runs off. What's the matter with you? Bill exits. Bill exits, pursuing Jean. Excuse me. Jonna exits, returns to her attic room. Barbara regains some of her composure, moves into the living room. Steve has by now dressed and exited, carrying suitcases. Karen is pulling on a stretcher, grabbing a few leftover items and restoring the hide bed I can do without a speech. I beg your pardon. I'm leaving. We're leaving back to Florida tonight, me and Steve, together. You want to give me some grief about yeah, that? Just wait a goddamn minute. You better find out from Jean just exactly what went on in there before you start pointing fingers. That's all I'm saying. Because I doubt Jean's exactly blameless in all this. And I'm not blaming her just because I said she's not blameless. That doesn't mean I blamed her. I'm saying that she might share in the responsibility. Do you understand me? You know, I know Steve should know better than Jean that she's only 14. My point is, it's not cut and dry, black and white, good and bad. It lives where everything lives, somewhere in the middle. Where everything lives. Where everybody else lives. Everyone but you, Karen. I'm not defending him. He's not perfect. Just like all the rest of us down here in the muck, I'm no angel myself. I've done some things I'm not proud of. Things you'll never know about. And you know what? I may even have to do some more things I'm not proud of again. Because sometimes life puts you in a corner that way. And I am a human being after all. Anyway, you better, you better have hash, settle your own hash before you start making speeches to the rest of us. Come January, I'll be in Belize. Doesn't that sound nice? Karen exits, rolling her suitcase behind her. Bill enters. I'm taking Jean with me. I'm heading back. Fun. Well, she's too much for you right now. Okay. And I'm sure you're going to blame me for all this. Uh, I fail. As a sister, as a mother, as a wife. I fail. No, you don't. And I can't make it up to Jean right now, so let's just wait till I get back from home. You and Jean have about 40 years left to fight to make up. Well, what happens in 40 years? You die. Well, I mean, no, no. well, if you're lucky. <laughs> so sweet. If we're lucky. You're never going to come back to me, are you? Never say never. Even if things don't work out with you and Marcia. Sid. And I'm never really going to understand why. The next day, Barbara and Jana are in the study. Last time I 
spoke with my father, we were talking about know, something about the state of the world, something like that. <clears throat> and he said, uh, he said, you know, this country has always been pretty much of a whorehouse, but it used to have a little promise. Now it's nothing but a shithole. And now I think maybe he was talking about something else, I mean, something more specific, something about himself. You know, it's, it's his house, his family, his marriage, himself. And I don't really know, I just know there's something Voice. No, it wasn't sad. It was something, something more hopeless than that. As though, as though it had already happened. As though what was already disappearing had disappeared. It was too late. That it was already over, and no one has seen it gone. This country, this experiment, America, this hubris. What a little night if no one saw it go. Here today, gone tomorrow. Dissipation is actually much worse than cataclysm. Mrs. Fordham, are you firing me? Barbara. No, no, no. Absolutely not. No, I'm just uh, owning up to my own shitty behavior, <coughs> giving you an opportunity to quit. Because there is work, and then there's work. And after all, I'm here. I mean, look around, no one else is around. So, you know, it's not that your services aren't necessary, it's just that I am still here, God damn it. I'm prepared to stay. I'm familiar with this job. I can do this job. I don't do it for you or Mrs. Weston. Or even for Mr. West, right? I do it for me. Oh. I need the work. Jenna, what did my father say to you the last time you talked to him? He talked a lot about his daughters. His three daughters and his granddaughter. That was his job. Thank you. That makes me feel better knowing you can lie. Listen, I want you to stay on. I'll take care of your salary. You don't need to worry about it. I'm still here, goddammit. The next day, Barbara, still wearing her nightgown, and Ivy in the dining room. The house has taken on a ghostly path. Elsewhere at the house, John prepares dinner in the kitchen. <coughs> Is she clean? Clean-ish, so she's not clean. Uh, just, you know, the woman's got brain damage, dummy, you know? If you think I'm going to strip search her every time she slurs a word, you know the difference. Well, back off. We're trying to get by here, okay? I'm nervous. Why? Oh, Christ. I mean, not tonight. Why not? <laughs> well, we've only just now started to get into our kind of rhythm around here, and now you come in here with your little issues. I have to tell her, don't I? We're leaving for New York tomorrow. That's not a good idea. A good idea? For you and little Charlie to take this thing any further. It's not up to you. A lot of fish in the sea. Surely you can find one person who you're not related to. I happen to love the person I'm related to. Fuck, love? I don't want a crock of shit. I mean, people fall in love with painted rocks already. Jonna brings food from the kitchen. Whoa, it looks great. What is it? Cabbage. Oh, Bob Peter's my favorite. Oh. Jonna retires to the kitchen. Do you think I shouldn't tell her? You should rethink the whole proposition. I mean, New York is a ridiculous idea. I mean, you're almost 50 years old, Ivy. You're going to break a hip. Just eat your catfish. You're infuriating. I am the one fucking my cousin. I have lived in this town year in and year out, hoping against hope someone would come into my life. Oh, don't get all Carson McCullers on me, huh? <laughs> oh. Now wipe that tragic look off your face and eat your catfish. Who are you to speak to me like this? Violet enters the dining room. Howdy, Mom! 
What's how do you know? <laughs> Look, catfish. Catfish. Jana, are you hungry? No. No. I mean, you should smile like me. Mom needs her dinner, please. I'm not hungry. Well, you haven't eaten anything today. You didn't eat anything yesterday. I'm not hungry. You're eating. You do what I say. Everyone does what I say. May I ask why neither of you is dressed? <laughs> Who is it with you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're dressed. We're not sitting around naked, are we? Right. Did you want us to dress up? Because she's coming over for fish. Because you're coming over for fish. We're supposed to dress up. John re-enters with two plates of food. I'll leave my room. That's fine. Thank you. Jonna exits with her plate of food. Eat. No. Eat it, Mom. Eat it. No. Eat it, you fucker. Eat the catfish. Go to hell. Mom, I have something to talk to no, you about. No, you don't. Barbara. Oh, no, you don't. don't. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Please. What's to talk about? <laughs> Mom, forget it. Mom, eat the fucking fish. I'm not hungry. Eat it. No. Mom, <laughs> eat the fish. No. So if I had reached 
him there at the end. I would have said to him that I hope this is not about little Charlie because you know that I've always known about that. If I would reached him at the motel, I would have said, now, you'd just be better off if you stopped sulking about that ancient history. I mean, even if you feel cast down, there's just no way that it lets you off the hook. You reached him at the motel. Oh. Yeah, I called him at the motel. The Country Squire Motel? Country Squire Motel, right. Yeah, and I, it was too late. He'd already checked out. I, I called him on Monday after I got into the safety deposit box. You remember I told you that I had to wait for the bank to open to get into the safety deposit box? So I probably should have called him sooner or called someone, Ivy, the police, I don't know. But your father and I, we had an arrangement. You better understand something. For people like your father, they never had any money, even as children. Our generation, money is important. I had to know what he was. Well, he left a note. He said to call him at the motel. I called him, the Country Squire Motel, on Monday after you had gotten into your safety deposit box. We had an arrangement. Well, if you had stopped Daddy from killing himself, you wouldn't have needed to get into your safety well, deposit box. Hindsight's 2020, isn't it? Did the note say that Daddy was going to kill himself? Mom, I my wits about me. Maybe I would have done it differently, but I was your father and I we were you both, were both fucked up. You fucked up. You're fucked up. You better understand something, you smug little ingrate. that there was one reason that your father killed himself. And that's you. You think this would have happened if, if you'd stayed around here? But no, it was just him and me left alone in this house, in the dark, abandoned. So, so no, I waited. I waited until I could get into the safety deposit box. And I would still. You know, he did this. You know, you can put your knife of judgment on me if you want. Go ahead, but it was him that did this, not us. You want to know who's stronger, Beth? I'm stronger than anyone. When, when everything is gone and disappeared. I'll still be here, Beth. So, I'm the strong one now, you son of a bitch. Yeah, you're right. You are the strong one.
and you're gone.